Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I'd just firstly uh, like to thank uh, Madam Mayor uh, for attending today. Uh, it's great to see uh, so many of you here. I just want to uh, say a very warm welcome uh, to this rededication service for the Nuneaton Colliery Employees War Memorial. This is a memorial that signifies 61 men, Nuneaton men, that fought and died in the First World War, all of which were employees at the Nuneaton Colliery. It's great for me today to be able to welcome uh, two very special people, Barbara Sturdy and Rachel Barrett, who are here with us today. Um, Barbara and Rachel both have uh, a really special and poignant reason for being here today uh, because they are the descendants of two of those people that are named on this war memorial. We meet on the 1st of July 2017, a hundred years since the start of the Battle of the Somme, a day on which 60,000 British casualties were taken. And I think it's a very poignant day to be here rededicating this war memorial and remembering those 61 men from the Neaton Colliery who made the ultimate sacrifice for our today. I'd just like to say a few thank yous. First of all, I'd like to thank Trevor Wood, this gentleman here. Paddy, as he's known to local people here. Without Paddy, none of us would be here today. Paddy came up to me about three years ago at the launch of the Poppy Appeal in Neaton and explained about this memorial, which I knew was always here, but I'd never really thought very much about. Had he told me that he'd spent many, many years laying a wreath on his own on Remembrance Sunday to remember the colliery men that were lost in the First World War and how the men were not commemorated properly because their names were not on this memorial. So thank you, Paddy, for doing what you've done. I think you do deserve some praise for it. There are also a number of other people that took on board Paddy's passion and enthusiasm. We have Eric Bollard and Chris Holland who've worked really hard on the research of making sure that we've got these names and the plaque as close to the original as we could. Uh, we also have here Lorraine Mosley. Uh, Lorraine actually owns the bungalow uh, behind us and has the pleasure of having this lovely garden ornament uh, in her front garden. And I think she's really proud today that we've been able to do what we've been able to achieve. Uh, I've also uh, would like to say a special thank you to Alan Farnell who works in my office, he's put a massive amount of work into this project. Uh, I was initially uh, trying to get a number of things done, but due to time it took many, many months, in fact years, and a lot of frustration from Paddy that things weren't moving along as quickly as they could. So I'm so grateful uh, to bring Alan in and bring things um, to uh, a culmination as quickly as we have since. I'd also like to thank Roger Craddock, who is here with us today. Uh, Roger is a director of Holland and Barrett International, a very important local company. I was very fortunate after making one phone call to Roger for him uh, to agree uh, for Holland and Barrett to actually pay for this memorial plaque. So I really do thank Holland and Barrett for the contribution that, that you've made. There are a number of other uh, thank yous. I'd also like to thank um, Eddie and the regulars at the Midland Railway. From your kind contributions, we've been able to pay for this wonderful memorial to be cleaned. Uh, I would also like to thank Dobson's, who are the stonemasons who have recreated this excellent plaque, and DB Deval. For those of you who are lucky enough to have one of these orders of service, and I do apologise that there aren't that many, uh, DB Deval were kind enough to produce those for us free of charge uh, for today. So I'd just like to thank everybody else who's turned up today, the standard bearers. Uh, I'd like to thank Murray Richards for coming along at very late notice uh, to order those standards. And I would also like to thank David Adams, uh, who's the Padre at Bramcott, for coming along uh, to rededicate this memorial for us today. 
It's a memorial service that actually mirrors the original service in 1922 when this memorial was first dedicated uh, under a service taken by Brigadier General uh, Sir John Barnsley. So, without further ado, I will hand over to David Adams. Thank you. Great, great chant! Ladies and gentlemen, it's a privilege to be here this afternoon with you. I've been at Birmingham Cathedral this morning to a, quite a great gathering to remember the song. But it's always fitting and poignant when we come to remember people that were actually known to us. We can sometimes, sometimes get lost in the numbers, especially on a day like today. But as we remember these brave men who answered the call to serve their country, it's very fitting that, that you will know of them and their families and it's wonderful that we have their relatives here today. So this is a, a poignant moment for us to come and remember. So let's begin with a prayer. Lord God, we gather today with the jarring images of waste and ruin of war. We come to remember all those who were involved in war and conflict. These are friends. Would it honor their memory, those who inhabited the conflict and the carnage, who endured and those who showed great courage and loyalty to comrades at arms. Those who saw things that we can only imagine. Lord, we ask for your forgiveness for the ugliness and the waste of war. For we come today to give thanks and to remember, to ask that you would bless us in our memories, our recollections. We ask for your mercy and we ask for your grace, your grace to help us remember. So we sing our first hymn together, O oh God, our help in ages past. service we know pause to reflect and bring to mind and remember and honor the memory of those who have gone before us and have prayed paid the ultimate price in giving their lives for the service of their country and of mankind the last post <laughs>
to read from scripture before we pray it would make more sense that way I think this is from Romans chapter 8 reading from verse 31 God's love in Christ Jesus what then are we to say about all things if God is for us who is against us he who God would, did not withhold his own son but gave him up for us all will he not all Will he not with him give us everything else? Who will bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies, who is to condemn. It is Christ Jesus who died, yes, who was raised, who is at the right hand of God, and now intercedes for us. Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will hardship, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? As it is written, for your sake we are being killed all day long. We are accounted as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, nor angels nor rulers, nor things present nor things to come, nor powers nor height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Stand up, stand up, ace. 